my name is Susan Gray and I am here uh, with the Canadian Chinese Times. I am so honored and privileged to be speaking to one of the mayoral candidates today. Uh, we have Mr. Gordon Ward that is here and uh, so he's going to share with us uh, a little bit about himself. So I just want to thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you. That's a real thank pleasure. You. Oh, thank yeah. you. We appreciate you okay. for taking the time out of your busy schedule. And uh, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and just for the audience okay. just to know who you are, your background and what made you decide to uh, run for mayor? Well, I, I am born and raised in Alberta. Uh, my father was a surveyor. We moved around quite a bit. I lived in numerous communities throughout the province. I left the province in the early 1980s to pursue uh, my education and a career, which led me into uh, international project management. I um, worked with some very large international engineering companies, both as an employee and as a consultant. Um, I came back to Alberta in the 1990s when it was time to raise a family. I figured Alberta was one of the best places in the world to do that. So we moved back to what we consider to be home. Um, at that time, I also went through a series of circumstances where I changed careers uh, from business and engineering and project management into a very specialized area of medicine. And I did that more for idealistic and compassionate reasons than anything else. So I established myself here in the province of Alberta, uh, eventually had offices in Edmonton, Red Deer, Calgary, and Camrose. Uh, I've done that for the past two decades. I eventually chose Edmonton to be the corporate office and my private residence. I live downtown in Edmonton. Um, one of the reasons, actually one of the single largest reasons that I'm running for mayor is that coming from a very large international business experience background, I'm a little concerned with the management practices that are being very entrenched into the city. Mm -hmm. um, today is, is an interesting day to, to watch the news because we have one of the world's largest governments shutting down and everybody is talking about the consequences of that but nobody's talking about the causes or the reasons. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I believe very strongly that the fundamental principles of business that are being entrenched into the city of Edmonton as a uh, management practice are the same principles that we have seen behind the bankruptcy of the state of California the same principles behind the bankruptcy of the city of Detroit and certainly what we're now seeing in the United States and half of the uh, European Union countries. So I've decided that um, Edmonton was not getting uh, an appropriate choice of leadership in the city mm -hmm. and I believe in this strong enough in the community of Edmonton and uh, that I would set aside a very passionate career long enough to try to serve the city of Edmonton and not just the people that I lobbied for in the last couple of years. Wow. Well, can you tell me more about that? Go into a bit more, uh, like, in regards to, let's say, the development of the city right now. Tell me more. I think Edmonton is, is growing. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing more and more development. Developers are feeling confident enough that they're spending not just thousands of dollars, but tens of millions and even hundreds of millions of dollars towards growing the infrastructure, drawing people to the city, so it is a very positive thing. Uh, but growth unchecked and unmanaged can be rather malignant mm. at times. So yes, it's nice to see the growth. It's drawing people from around the world to make Edmonton a feature. Right. Um, there is certainly a dynamic positive aspect of it. Uh, and again, with unchecked growth, it could cause a lot of problems in the future. Tell me more about that when you said malignant. Explain. Um, for municipality, okay, I think the malignancy is when you let growth go unchecked and you don't maintain what you already have. Capital expenditures and building new projects are a good sign of a vibrant, dynamic community to begin with, but not at the expense of the existing infrastructure not spending or directing funding to new capital projects that you can't even support new infrastructure to, to s bolster it at the same time that you're ignoring capital projects that have been ongoing for decades right. and have uh, been forgotten for so long that not only have they forgotten about the advance of the growth of that particular project but they're deteriorating to the point that it's affecting the entire community and I'm, I'm speaking specifically about something like the LRT Mm. Uh, we have tremendous amount of growth in capital projects that are positive for the city of Edmonton, but we have done that at uh, tremendous cost and expense 
to a significant part of our infrastructure that is key to all residents of the city. People from the south getting to uh, new capital projects downtown. Um, and that's an image that is becoming an international blight for the city of Edmonton. There is a website, livingin-canada.com, that advises people seeking information on moving to Canada. Once they've decided Canada is the best place to live, they start looking at the various different cities. Mm -hmm. And in this particular website, they're advising people that are intended to be residents of Canada that our infrastructure is so bad that as a major metropolitan center, the primary mode of transportation is a car because you cannot trust uh, the transportation system. Hmm. Well, what would be your priorities in, or what's your vision of the city of Edmonton for all of this? So, or what's the balance? Well, to build, to build the reputation of the city, I've heard many people talk about going to Toronto, going to, to Calgary or Vancouver, and learning what they do. I think Edmonton has its own business culture. I think it has its own community culture. Mm -hmm. Instead of wanting to travel someplace else, start by inviting these people here. That's the first thing. If you're proud of your own home, right. then display it. Uh, to do that is to start keeping our house clean inside. At one time, Edmonton had the ability to boast as being a world leader in LRT systems. It was an com immense capital project that we could take pride in. But as we move on with time, funding gets misdirected, redirected, we start new capital projects, and now the LRT system is one of the biggest blights or embarrassment on an international scale. So cleaning up their house, tidying things up, sweeping and dusting, and finishing off capital projects that have been prolonged over the course of decades would be a significant priority. Got it. Okay. No, that's that's really interesting. What would you be how would you promote Edmonton as a business friendly city then if we're if we're moving towards um, you know, well you, you have to be careful with what you spent, right? Um, but how would you promote business here in Edmonton to promote growth but yet still I, I think Edmonton business people, whether it's the small mom and pop shops which constitute somewhere about 94 to 95 percent and then we have very large corporations that have an international uh, spread as well. I think these are the people that tell you how it's done. Uh, as a businessman I'm not going to take general direction from somebody outside my company on how best to market myself, how to present myself to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So we have um, a lot of vibrant business communities scattered throughout the city and as mayor and one of, of 13 other people governing the corporation of the city, I think the city or the corporation works with other incorporated entities and we build that together. And again, I think the first thing to do is start inviting people here to showcase Edmonton, not traveling. And I, I have traveled um, over the years for, for international conferences, but I've also also hosted people and invited them to my operation to, to see Edmonton, to see our province. And I think that's the first step. Instead of going someplace else, keep your home clean and start inviting them here. Um, businesses would, would invest in that. They know how to market themselves better than anybody else. And so we work as a collaborative group. Mm -hmm. How do you plan to do that exactly? Trade shows. Trade shows? Over for okay. Edmonton, promoting Edmonton? Yes. And, okay. and specifically, I mean, um, Atlanta is known for uh, known for a very specific industry. Okay, Edmonton is known internationally as, as an oil city, and we certainly have enough enough representatives of that industry here. But we also have high tech industries. We have have micro technology industries, and so start hosting these mm -hmm. here in Edmonton. Bring the people the world to here. Invite them out. Standard marketing procedures internet advertising, brochures, mentioning to people in your industry that Edmonton is the place to come for business conferences, for medical conferences, for engineering conferences, and technical conferences. Build that here first. Bring them to us instead of us going to them. Excellent. Uh, what do you plan to do to encourage development with, well, this is one of the questions for the business, uh, Edmonton Energy and Technology Park, for instance? Energy and technology relies a lot on provincial and, and federal support, but I think Edmonton as a city can also do that as well. 
both in encouraging new growth, small startup companies. Mm -hmm. um, again, Edmonton is 94 to 95% mom and pop shops, and it's that's where you start. If you can make it easier for business licensing, for access to um, property, to set up a shop or manufacturing, and encourage these people's vision and dream. Right. And then they can go from two people starting a small company that has a little computer building into an international corporation. And we've seen that in Edmonton already with some of the companies here. And certainly since we are a capital city, we are an energy city, we're an energy province. That's right. And putting effort, again, the business marketing, bringing people here, helping these people establish what they do best is their technology, their capabilities, and their business strategies. Very good. What about the uh, revenue and expenditures? Um, What's your policy right now on taxes and taxation? I know there's a lot of people debating that, so can you give me a little bit more information on that? Well, without taxes, we're all going to starve. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, so that, that is, is yes. one of the things that, that is yeah. a given. Uh, we have watched taxes skyrocket in the last few years. Okay. Um, I think some of that is as a direct result of inappropriate management procedures, bureaucracy getting out of hand, administrative duties getting out of hand, that sort of thing. Um, we've seen a tremendous growth in our infrastructures to support the surrounding communities. Um, so taxes is not necessarily a bad thing, but first of all, it's where you spend the taxes, value added. Expending, uh, or spend expenditures on new capital projects while you are letting old capital projects where your very core foundational and infrastructure fall apart is not good spending on taxes. Yeah. That's throwing good money away. Um, not necessarily after bad, because the, the new capital projects are a feature to help make Edmonton the international city. But it's still throwing good money away. Um, so some of the issues would be to watch the, um, there are I mean, there are a variety of things that Edmonton has available as a municipality that haven't really been explored. One of the first things that everybody goes after is property tax. But we have levies that are typically volunteered by, by developers. And working with these developers, it's in best interest for the city of Edmonton and the taxpayers, and also in their interest, to understand their interest, they need to stay in business, and they need to have a profit. Right. But that profit should not be at the direct expense of the citizens of Edmonton as well. So as a mayor or an executive position for the city, uh, you have to balance that out, knowing that the business and the levies that you put on their backs, these people are the backbone of the city, yeah, but they need this, the citizens as well. So they can build all they want, and if the citizens move because the taxes are too high, or the citizens don't want to move because taxes are too high, right. okay, then everybody fails in that. So it's a, a delicate balance in business. Uh, we find that when you deal with your supplier, mm -hmm. they have their expenses, you have to take that and you can't pass it on to your customer. But you cannot outprice yourself, otherwise they will move to the next competitor. And unfortunately, Edmonton has a lot of competition. And if we cannot make both business um, decisions that make it practical for developers to be here and make it practical as far as taxes are concerned, then these people will just simply keep their job downtown Edmonton and move to the surrounding communities. Exactly. We would lose a tax base. Since we're on the topic, of what's your position on the arena? For the arena. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on council <laughs> or in politics at the time it was happening. And uh, so a lot of my opinions, one way or the other, really don't matter at this point. As mayor of the city of Edmonton, um, right now what you're looking at is managing a project that is a fait accompli, it is established, and so the goals and challenges there are to make sure you stay under contractual obligations to make sure the cost overruns do not become the burden on, on the taxpayer. Mm. Um, I think in some ways it can have a very positive effect on Edmonton and, and the image of Edmonton, but in a lot of ways it uh, misdirected funds away from other communities that it was absolutely crucial to. Got it. What would be your plans uh, or where would your priority be regarding that? In the arena, or, yeah, I, or everything mm, that's yeah. everything that's associated with that, and also with, let's say the um, with the downtown revitalization, everything, because a lot of that was part of the reason is to bring more business to Edmonton, right, to attract. So. That's a social experiment. I'm not quite sure about. Hmm. 
Uh, Tell me more about that. <laughs> I remember as a teenager hearing that when they built the Coliseum or Rexall Place and how it promised to revitalize an area. And 30 years later, okay, that area wasn't vital at all. Mm. It's only taken the last couple of years, and, and rightfully so, give uh, the this, this city credit for where it's due. They've spent tens of millions of dollars on a revitalization program along 118th Avenue. And we're seeing people, not because we've had the Coliseum there, or Rexall Place over the last 30 years, we're seeing people with a new vision for that area. It's a grassroots community vision. And with the amount of money that Edmonton has spent in, in the physical infrastructure making it look beautiful, the business residents take a tremendous amount of pride. They have signs on their streets saying, uh, we believe in 118. We're seeing residents move in, new residents buying property, not just to renovate it for uh, rental property, but they're actually moving in, they want to live there. Mm -hmm. We're watching people buy homes for their, for their families, their children, they're spending their life savings renovating and upgrading old dilapidated homes. So the community itself, despite the fact 30 years ago, it was told that having an, an arena would bring this vitality to the community, it never did happen. Hmm. And it took, it took the neighborhood on its own, with its own community spirit, to do that. And our tax dollars, the city of Edmonton, helped contribute to that. But it starts with the grassroots. So really it's a social experiment with the new downtown arena to see what happens. Will it follow the same example that we've already got 30 years experience with? What do you predict? I would like to believe in the optimistic view, that it will be a project that does revitalize. I've talked to a lot of the business people along 104th Street on Jasper Avenue, and they're extremely optimistic. But those were the same same things that the businessman from uh, 118th Avenue told me they believed 30 years ago. So I'll stay optimistic no matter what. Better be optimistic, yeah. I know. Okay. And so I'm encouraged with it. What does concern me, though, is that it's an example of one of the issues of a new capital project at the expense of our existing infrastructure. We do not have the LRT in place to support it. The people from southern part of Edmonton have to drive their cars. So what are your plans to make that better? I think we look at the, uh, the allocation of taxes and how it's done. Mm -hmm. um, in priority of taxes, I think we look at, first of all, is infrastructure. And the number one part of infrastructure is not so, so much the hard infrastructure, but the soft infrastructure, and that's your community-based programs. Um, these are programs that we've initiated as, as a municipality. We start community-based programs for poverty, homelessness, education, school lunch programs. Right. Um, I was taught just a couple weeks ago at, uh, at a forum that the comments, on, they literally did bring me to tears, and that, that was that there are 37,000 children that cannot learn because they're hungry. Mm -hmm. okay. And those are programs, these hot lunch programs, that we initially started as a community and as a municipality. And once they get started, once they get going, we forget about them. Mm -hmm. We move on to something else. And then the people involved in these programs that are intended to help children learn, to keep people off the street, ultimately to reduce crime. We forget about those things. We move on to something else. Okay? Uh, the system fails on a grassroots level, and we see increase in demands in the hospitals, in the emergency. The single largest economic group that floods the emergency room are the homeless people and the people on the lower end of the social economic scale. The single largest uh, socioeconomic group that, that tax our police services okay, is this target group and we've forgotten about them. So putting the appropriate funding first on the real infrastructure that makes the city, which is the people, and that's mm -hmm. the grassroots program, followed by building the roads, giving them the proper transportation. When our international reputation is published on internet sites that our own citizens don't trust mm -hmm. our transportation, and that the single largest uh, mode of transportation is cars, okay, then that's the second. So build the infrastructure, which means complete our LRT. Um, fill the potholes. Yeah, I think everybody would like that. <laughs> so what's, um, let's move on to a different question now. What is your position on the arts? The arts? Yes, the arts. I wanted to grow up to be a rock star. 
Did you? I went. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of rock star? I, I couldn't couldn't make it. Or uh, there were people that I thought were far more talented than I was. So okay. you do something simple like engineering and business. Oh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> um, actually, I learned something uh, new just recently on a tour of 104th Street. Um, the first time I moved to Edmonton as a 17-year-old 17 17-year-old kid in, um, uh, in 1978. That area was old, dilapidated, it was industrial, okay? mm -hmm. and that area still survived over the last 30 years. And one of the most, econo most important economic aspects of it was the artists and the musicians. I was told this by the 104th Street Committee, that it was the artists okay, and the musicians that kept the local economy alive long enough that it made more people interested into it, they started to build uh, or move in and start condominiums, okay? Mm -hmm. And then it now becomes a very vibrant downtown uh, community. Um, arts is what, it's the heart of a community. If business is the backbone, arts is the heart. Exactly. I would agree with that. Yeah. What would you say your position is on the Film Commission okay. and what's happening here? Actually, I'm not that familiar with it. Oh, okay. what's what's happening with the film commission? Well, I know there's been um, a lot of issues with uh, the entertainment industry. That there's a lot of films that that left the province that went to like the BC and Ontario, and and now it's starting to come here. They had a few movies coming into Alberta. Uh, it's just that there's, I know for for myself, um, uh, we were artists and they left the province. So um, we'd like to see more. I can now you you got it back on myself. Uh, to see more of that funding to bring more of that here so that they don't have to leave and that there's more drops for everybody. Well, one of, the, one of the things we're talking about previous management practices, mm -hmm. it's extremely difficult on a local level, provincial level, national or an international scale to explain to the artistic arts and culture community that Edmonton could not find a local artist to express its own heart and mind, that the city actually went to California and spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy a piece of artwork to put on display that I have heard nothing but contempt for. Oh, I think I know what okay. you're talking about. <laughs> and and uh, so how do we excuse that to build an international reputation that, uh, mm -hmm. of a center of art? We have the fringe. And I watched this summer walking the streets of, of uh, local artists from Edmonton doing international caliber shows. I met people from mm -hmm. Montreal saying that they enjoyed this. In fact, one group, uh, acrobatic group, talking to them, because I lived in Montreal for quite a few years, so I was quite fascinated talking to these gentlemen, and they said they preferred to come to Edmonton than Montreal. That I liked. Mm -hmm. But when, as a community, as a municipality, we have to acknowledge to the rest of the world we can't find an artist. How would you that encourage that then? Okay. For, for the city of Edmonton, because I'm sure there's talented people here. Then, then start taking things like the half a million dollar projects and, and quit shopping in California. Mm -hmm. I, I attended an art gallery last night that um, I wasn't familiar with the artist on display, but it was captivating as soon as I walked in. And the group sponsoring the forum last night is very proactive with that. They're one of the few galleries in the world that actually will pay artists to do the display. They're doing it on a grassroots level with their own business contacts and business community. Okay? And that's what you want to promote. Mm -hmm. Instead of sending our money, hard-earned tax dollars, to California and people that couldn't even identify Edmonton on a map, let alone think we still live in igloos, okay? is yeah. you redirect the, the appropriate funds to local community artist groups. I agree with you on that. I totally agree with you. Okay, well, I want to ask you a question, because just for time's sake, because I want to make sure that we get this question in. Um, the mayor, if you're elected mayor, that's only, it's really only one vote. There's the whole council. How do you, what is your, I, I guess, um, how do you plan to get everybody to your ideas or to, to help build as mayor? How do you plan to get everybody, or influence everybody to do that? The type of leadership that is. Influence can be done either passively or aggressively. It can be done very respectfully or do, uh, with domination. Um, my previous background in business and engineering and doing international projects gave me a lot of exposure dealing on multi-million dollar issues 
with various different cultures. And it wasn't a matter of just bringing together one businessman from one culture and a method of, of business. It was a matter of bringing various different cultures, various different business people with various different perspectives. And the one goal at the end of it is that we all succeed. We accomplish, we build what we intended to. And the fundamental principles that I learned as a young businessman came from a gentleman named Gary Cooper, and he truly was the world's best boss. Um, he was my mentor for quite a few years. In fact, I list him on, on my website, oh. okay? The principles that he taught me, and the first principle is trust. Trusting the people that work for you and understanding that loyalty is not demanded, okay? But it's earned. And so, with the new council that's coming up, we're going to see a lot of new faces, whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. with uh, a lot of people not running again, and vacancies. So we'll see a lot of new people. So I will not be the only person walking into the room at a new job, okay, trying to dominate a conversation. I think you're going to have a group of 12 people and a mayor, okay, that are truly interested in working together. Each of the 12 people representing their different wards will bring their own interests, their specific interests to the table. But the mayor's job is to look at the big picture, the bigger picture, and the biggest picture. And you start with trusting, earning loyalty, and listening before you make a comment. Very good. I was going to ask you the last question. Why should we vote for you as mayor? And you mentioned a lot, of so I'll let you expand on that. Well, as a businessman, mm -hmm. if I was conducting a job interview, uh, under no circumstances would I consider a journalist for the position of a janitor. Under no circumstances would I consider a social worker to operate medical equipment. And I would effectively and almost immediately terminate uh, a job interview where the candidate openly boasts, humorously or otherwise, that his friends and family have joked that the only, he's never had a real job in his life and that his only business experience is helping his spouse do the books in a home-based business. So what I'd like to offer as an alternative to the City of Edmonton is a strong international business management project approach mm -hmm. with strong leadership capabilities. I have spent the last couple decades outside the cameras, outside the media, in political issues lobbying on a provincial and federal level quite successfully in a lot of it, I might add. And so those are the three things that I can bring to the table. Good management, good understanding in leadership, and certainly political activity that would make Edmonton a better place as I sit in the seat of the mayor. Awesome. Well, there you have it. I just want to thank you okay. so much. Uh, Ms. That's Mr. Gordon Ward, uh, we're here again with the Edmonton Chinese Times, and I just think it's a pleasure uh, with all the information that you've been given today, you have a website. Okay. Yes, I do. Yes, yeah, so you might want to promote your website. Is Gordon it? for Mayor, Gordon number four. Number okay. four. Oh, oh dot CA. Yeah. Dot CA. Yeah. So there you again have it, um, Mr. Gordon Ward. And you can go to his website, which is Gordon for Mayor with a number four. Number four. Yes. Dot CA. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.